So let's move into uh, sphere group circulation. Uh, we have our equations of motion in the zonal and meridional directions. Uh, the inertial terms Coriolis, pressure gradient, and the wind forcing in the x and y directions. Uh, we s assume uh, that the flow is uh, uh, at a very low Rossby number, so the acceleration terms can be set to zero. Assume a steady flow, and then you differentiate this uh, with respect to uh, y, uh, and this with respect to x, and then subtract. So you get rid of the minus uh, sign, and end up with uh, uh, and the other terms cancel out because they will be du dx dy and dv dx dy type terms that will drop out. Um, so uh, you end up with f du dx plus uh, f dv dy plus beta v where when you differentiate uh, this respect with respect to uh, y you're going to get df dy which is beta times v. So that's the uh, the meridional gradient of the Coriolis uh, fa uh, effect, uh, the beta effect which we already mentioned in the context of, for example, the uh, western boundary intensification in the ocean. Uh, that's equal to 1 over rho 0. The pressure terms cancel out because you have dx dy dx dy uh, and the signs. Um, you end up with d squared tau x uh, dx dz uh, sorry, d squared tau y dx dz minus d squared tau x dy dz, right? Didn't do anything fancy. We used the lower Rossby number approximation to drop the uh, uh, time terms and then differentiated, uh, cross-differentiated and subtracted to get this uh, expression. Um, and then we are going to use the hydrostatic approximation uh, with our uh, Buzanesque approximation, every time rho is with g, we just write it as rho zero, the background density, and then the continuity equation for the incompressible fluid, where the rho terms disappear, so you have uh, the non-divergence equation uh, for the ocean. So now what do you do? Using the assumption that vertical velocities at the surface goes to zero because there is no water leaving the ocean or entering the ocean, rainfall etc are uh, not a big deal here, and at some depth uh, of uh, no motion uh, W uh, again goes to zero because there is no vertical exchange. There as we saw before the pressure gradient goes to zero so the uh, geostrophic currents go to zero and there is no vertical velocity as well. Then this continuity equation can be integrated in the vertical to write uh, that as du bar dx plus dv bar dy equal to zero or in terms of transport dm bar x dx d plus dm bar y dy equal to zero where these u bar and v bar are essentially the integrations of the zonal currents uh, in the vertical from the level of no motion to the surface so the w terms disappear when we integrate the continuity equation so you have u dz and v bar goes from minus d0 to 0 of v dz okay the integration in the vertical uh, can be written as uh, meridional and zonal uh, transports going from minus d to z minus d0 to 0 of rho 0 v dz and rho 0 u dz so you get the two uh, meridional uh, i mean transport terms that we are uh, talking about here i'm sure you know the difference between currents and transports currents are just particles moving transports are volumes moving um that gives us essentially uh integrated so substituting that into our equation here uh if we integrate this over the depth as well what is uh, what are we going to get we are going to get depth integrated meridional transport uh using the continuity equation on this one we can write uh the sphere group transport here beta times integrated meridional transport is given by 1 over rho 0 minus d0 to 0 integral of del square tau y dx dz minus del square tau x dy dz 
Amazing, right? For low Rossby number, incompressible fluid, steady flow, we, go, we get this nice expression for integrated meridional transport, which is, con which is determined by just the winds uh, in this case. Very simple expression. So this was Harold Sverdrup's great contribution. There are many details missing, of course. It's a steady flow and doesn't uh, consider many things like the western boundary current, for example. Uh, but we will see that you can integrate the transport in the interior and use the integrated transport up to the western boundary as the transport in the western boundary. So beta v bar then 1 over rho 0 del tau x minus del tau del tau y del x minus del tau x del y. So essentially we are uh, taking this and we are uh, integrating when you integrate this um, tau y and tau x go to zero at uh, some depth d0 so you just get uh, tau x and tau y uh, and that's what uh, we are doing here okay so beta v bar in this case gets simplified because tau x and tau y disappear at uh, some depth so you end up with the curl of the wind stress divided by rho zero is giving you beta times v bar which is the integrated meridional transport vertically integrated meridional transport okay so writing that as m bar y we can integrate uh, the rho zero v dz uh, which is this term here so that's what we wrote as curl of tau when we say z here it's curl in the xy plane which is vertical to the xy plane so imagine now the northeasterlies and the the westerlies in the northern hemisphere or the southeasterlies and the westerlies in the southern hemisphere as we said before you curl your fingers northerlies to the north south northeasterlies to the south you end up with a curl that's uh, downward so it's negative which means the transport is southward consistency check right so that's a very simple expression for uh, spread of transport now we have to match that with the uh, Ekman transport which I should probably keep for uh, the next podcast just remember start with the equations uh, uh, of uh, momentum continuity and hydrostatic uh, use the low Rossby number approximation to drop the non-steady terms and then do cross differentiation and remember the wind stress forcing and remember that when you integrate wind stress from uh, in the vertical uh, you are going to get just the surface expressions because uh, the wind stress disappears uh, as you go into the ocean at some depth very simple elegant simple beautiful